Isaiah Sakamaki is a 17-year-old high school student who's so bored with his current life that his very first sentence in the anime is, if I could sell my boredom, I'm confident I could make a living. He is lying down near a calm river on a sunny day, contemplating the sky and his boring life, when suddenly he spots a group of high school delinquents bullying a younger classmate, threatening to tie his hands and throw him naked in the river. The poor boy mumbles a quiet, save me, before Aizioi stands up, grabs a fairly large rock in his hand and throws it in the group's direction, with so much power that the shock sends everyone flying. He's throwing one rock after the other, raising dust everywhere, thinking that he's finally having a bit of fun, but soon enough, everyone recognizes who's throwing the rocks and runs away. A few seconds later, Aizioi is standing there with no one around. He complains to himself about how boring that was and leans down to grab the school bag before hearing a distant, sparkly sound getting closer and closer to him. It's his invitation to a parallel world where he could have all the fun that he wants at the little garden. Our protagonist is not the only person with superpowers and overwhelming boredom. Asuka Kudu and Yokashuka are going to be his two human companions throughout his journey. Asuka's family is part of a financial conglomerate. As a child born into money and with the extraordinary power of controlling living beings and even objects, Ashuka is regarded as a highly valuable asset to her family's business and is often used to their advantage. She finds her invitation to the little garden neatly enveloped on her desk, which she finds exciting and fun as usually no one has access to enter her room. Yokasukabe, on the other hand, is an introverted young girl who possesses the ability to talk to animals and use their special traits if she befriends them. However, her introversion is a big obstacle to her as her real wish and goal is to make human friends. Her little calico cat brings her her invitation, saying that it fell from the sky. Our heroes are instantly teleported to the little garden upon reading their letters. They're falling at a crazy speed from the sky, but they luckily land in a large lake, getting all drenched. Asuka complains about the fall, while Aizioi is the one who asks about everyone's identities and whether they all got the same letters. Asuka introduces herself, emphasizing her higher status, followed by Yokasuka, who seems intimidated by their strong personalities. Asuka then asks Aizioi about himself, who describes himself as dangerous, unrefined, crude, vicious, and the worst type of person there is. That's why she has to drop the attitude when dealing with him. They notice someone hiding in the bushes due to their psychic powers. The person hesitates before coming out to greet them. Impatient, Aizioi breaks the tree in front of them, revealing a cute bunny girl with long blue hair and a unique costume. Initially considering capturing her, they realize she poses no threat and allow her to introduce herself and explain the world they've entered. Wearing the biggest and brightest smile, Black Rabbit welcomes them to the little garden. She then proceeds to explain to them that the three of them were given special powers as gifts by various gods, demons, and stars, and for this reason, they were given the chance to participate in the gift games. The games are usually played by betting gifts, money, land, resources, prestige, and even people. And in order to win a game and receive a reward, the player should first clear the conditions the host of the game sets. Another thing is that this world is divided into many communities and every resident must belong to a community because living outside of one would be rather difficult. To demonstrate further, Black Rabbit suggests that they play a simple card gift game. She announces that she has the ability of a judge master, meaning that she can detect if someone is breaking the rules of a game through her rabbit ears that are connected to the little garden's central network. To win her little game, each player has to pick one phase card from the 52 cards she puts in front of them, but they only get one chance. She suggests that since they just joined the world, they can put their pride on the line, and if they win, she can do any one thing they ask her to do. Once accepted, the game is established, and a Jis roll, a worn scroll with the rules they approved of, appears in front of them. Aizioi asks her to let them check the cards first so they can set their strategies, and she accepts. Once done, Azioi steps forward to start first, and to everyone's surprise, he chooses a card from the middle, smashing the card table and making every other card visible for his other two companions, who hurriedly pick two other face cards. This doesn't necessarily break any rules, so both Asuka and Yo win, but the method Azioi used to pick its card in the first place was that he memorized every single card position, which impresses everyone else and shows how smart he actually is. Now that he has won, the one thing he wants from Black Rabbit is to tell him whether this world is fun or not, to which she happily replies with a yes. Black Rabbit then takes them back to the little garden's main gates, where they meet her community's leader, an 11-year-old boy with green hair and worn clothes who is ready to greet them. But as she was about to introduce them to him, she was told that Aizioi went exploring near the edge of the world and would be back later, which made her angry with him. Black Rabbit's hair turns a light pink from anger and frustration as she heads off to capture the problem child. In the meantime, the leader of the community, also called Jin Russell, leads Asuka and Yu inside. 
They all sit down in one of the liveliest cafes and each orders a drink of their choice. This is where Asuka discovers that Yo can talk to animals after a small conversation with the hybrid human cat waitress. But before Asuka could properly introduce her power, a large, arrogant-looking man called Galdo Gasper sat with them and introduced himself as the leader of the Forest Gero community, while mocking Jin's community by calling them the No Names. While looking for him, Black Rabbit is worried that he might have gotten caught up in some god's game. But it's already too late as when she finally finds him, Aizioi has already reached the edge of the world and challenged a water god, a huge-looking serpent who can control water. He does not back down even after Black Rabbit's multiple pleas and he insists that since he's the one who picked the fight, he will see it through. The water god tells him that the condition to win his game is to take his blow, but Aizioi declines saying that a fight isn't won once a victor is decided but rather when someone loses, which makes the water god even angrier. The water god's eyes shine a piercing blue and he summons three powerful tornadoes of water around him, which do not intimidate Aizioi in the slightest. He grins and with a single punch blows out the god's water currents, startling him. Jumping up to land his final blow, he praises the god for actually being pretty good before kicking him right between the eyes, knocking him unconscious. Black Rabbit is beyond amazed and thinks to herself how amazing his power is and what the possibilities are of a power like his belong to her people. Izioi's victory grants them a large water tree sapling that could provide water for a whole community, which makes Black Rabbit very happy and grateful since they don't have to buy water from other communities anymore, but her happiness only leads to an inevitable question. Izioi guesses that Black Rabbit is hiding something deal-breaking from them, the real reason why she summoned them into this world. Black Rabbit tries to deny it at first, saying that all there is to it is that they wanted them to have a fun time here at the little garden since they have special traits as humans, but Aizioi interrupts her, saying that he feels like the real reason is that either her community is really weak or something happened to them that put them on the decline. She remains silent, which confirms his words. Black Rabbit finally admits to Aizioi why she wanted them to join her community. The truth seems to be that the community is in dire straits, but it wasn't always like this. Up until a few years ago, their banner flew proudly all the way to the end of the east side, but one day they were targeted by a demon lord, and they got wiped out and stripped of their name and banner. Once challenged to a game by a demon lord, one cannot decline. Their community lost the game and became the No Names, and now they no longer have people who can participate in gift games except their leader and herself, the remaining being children aged 10 or younger. That's exactly why they need strong people like Aizioi, Asuka, and Yo to fight with them and help them rebuild their community. Aizioi thinks that taking back one's flag in honor from a demon lord is quite a romantic task and accepts her request. Black Rabbit's hair turns bright pink with happiness, and she thanks him. On the other side of Little Garden's gates, Galdo Gasper is trying to convince Asuka and Yo to join his community. He explains to Asuka and Yo how weak of a community the No Names are in his attempt to make them join his community instead. He also claims that his community has never once lost a game where its banner was bet and that they control the area because of that, which adds to the reasons why both Asuka and Yo should join his community. Asuka then immediately uses her powers of control to make Galdo tell them the truth about his claims. Turns out, the truth is that they kidnap the women and children of the enemy's community, then blackmail them, forcing them to accept their challenges, and what's even worse is that they kill those people the same night they kidnap them without telling their foe. After her power wears off, Galdo is infuriated because she made him expose their deeds and tries to attack her after turning into his tiger beast form, but Yo easily holds him down, and Asuka suggests that he accept a gift game against her, Yo and Jin Russell, if he wants them to keep quiet about it. After Black Rabbit and Aizioi join them back and learn of the recent events with Galdo, they all head to Thousand Eyes, an extremely large trade community that knows everything about the Little Garden. Upon their arrival, a small girl in a kimono introduces herself as Shureyasha, a senior official with a thousand eyes from a four-digit gate. Black Rabbit then explains that their world is somehow divided into seven layers by great gated walls. The smaller the number, the closer to the center, and the stronger you are, the closer to the center you live. Shureyasha is also the one who gave divinity to the water god Aizioi fought earlier and declares that she's the strongest host in the entire east side, which makes all three of our heroes stand up and request a challenge against her. She accepts them on the spot and teleports all of them into one of her game board worlds, which is big enough to be a world of its own. She then introduces her true identity, a demon lord of the sun and white knight. Seeing her immense power, Aizioi backs down and Yo takes on the challenge instead, which is to ride on a griffin's back and travel once around the lake. You lose if you fall back from his back. The griffin bets his pride while Yo bets her own life, which impresses and frightens everyone else. 
The ride is fierce and difficult, but Yo is able to win the challenge due to her father's wooden carving, giving her the power to fight back and not pass out before the finish line. In the end, she befriends the Greyfriend, and she now has the ability to fly just like him. To celebrate their victory, Shiryasha gives each of the three a special card that has the capability to store their gifts with the name of each gift. But to everyone's surprise, Ezio's card has unknown written on it, indicating that he can't be read even by such a power. 2049, they finally visit the land of the No Names, a land with infertile soil, no water, and the remains of buildings falling apart. The land was only destroyed three years ago, but it seems almost as if it had been abandoned for hundreds of years. The sight is more thrilling than saddening to Aizeoi, as he states that fighting the demon lord is sure going to be more fun than he thought. The episode ends with an unknown vampire girl giving the gift of the beast to Galdo Gasper for unknown motives and wondering what the new No Name's next move would be. The third episode starts with the No Man community finally using the water sapling won by Aizeoi. Water started flowing throughout all of the water channels, making everyone happier as they are finally growing steadily towards building their community once again. The night comes and all the citizens of the No Name community finally go to sleep, not realizing that some of Galdo's subordinates infiltrated their community to take some of the children hostage. Ezeoi spots them before they get further into the castle and playfully throws a small pebble using just two of his fingers in their direction, which makes a huge explosion and sends everyone flying. Jin Russell comes running to see what's happening after such a huge explosion. The thugs seem impressed by Ezeoi's power, and since all of them were blackmailed to work under Galdo, they start begging him to destroy Galdo and his community. Ezeoi declines, revealing to them that the people Galdo took hostage are already dead, making them fall to their knees in deep sorrow. Aizioe then uses this chance to start setting up his strategy. He tells them that he understands how much they despise Galdo and the demon lord responsible for their misery, and that there is no need to worry anymore because Jin Russell, the no-name community leader, will take revenge for them, which confuses Jin and even scares him a little. After getting back inside the castle, Aizioe explains to Jin that the community's biggest disadvantage is having neither a name nor a flag to represent themselves, so their only choice is to use their leader's name to make themselves known a leader that declares that he's going to take down the demon lords. This way, they will not only attract other communities' attention, but also have people interested in taking down the demon lords join them. Jin Russell then reveals an interesting fact. He says that they used to have a demon lord participate in games for the no names, but that he is now owned by a high-ranking official working for a thousand eyes. They could get them back, though, if they win a game in which the prize is their friend. Seeing how fun it seems, Aizioi agrees to participate in that game with the condition that Jin Russell wins the game against Galdo Gasper tomorrow. The game is held in a residential block overrun by dead trees. They find the G's rule for the game and the win condition is to defeat Galdo himself with a designated weapon instead of their gifts. Asuka, Yo, and Jin immediately start looking for Galdo and the weapon. They find their way into his castle and finally find him completely transformed into a white beast whose eyes are filled with bloodlust. Jin notices that the beast is of a vampiric nature, which raises his speculations about a certain someone being related to this matter. It seems that he knows something about the vampire girl who gave power to Galdo, who is flying around the area and watching their game very closely. Asuka takes matters into her own hands after Yo gets injured. Her strategy, setting Galdo's castle on fire and provoking him to get out of it. Once out, she commands the trees to restrain him and the sword they found earlier to give her power to defeat him, a perfect strategy that led to their victory. Forsgara disbands after Galdo's death. Following Aizeoi's strategy, Jin Russell steps in front of the Forest Galdo community's previous members, promises to return to each one of them their community's names and flags, and pledges to take down the demon lords who threaten their peace. The episode ends with two important events. The vampire girl from the previous episode looking down on the crowd surrounding Jin Russell and the others from afar and an unknown cocky-looking man visiting Shiroyasha's place. After the events of the previous night, Black Rabbit walks up to Aizioi, asking him if he really is going to participate in the game to get back their lost friend. He affirms, asking her about what their friend is like. Black Rabbit then tells him that her name is Leticia, and starts describing what a wonderful person she is before rushing to prepare some tea. He waits for her to leave before addressing the person hiding behind the window, listening in on their conversation. And there she appears, the vampire girl from the previous game, extending dead tree branches everywhere inside the room menacingly. He provokes her with questions, and she doesn't seem like she has enough time and starts immediately attacking him. An explosive sound is heard, making everyone else join them in the room. Aizioi made a huge hole in the wall while countering, impressing his opponent. But before he could land another blow, Black Rabbit yelled for him to stop, 
telling him that that person was their friend Leticia. They all sit down for Black Rabbit to properly introduce everyone. It becomes apparent that Leticia helped Galdo in the game to test the problem children's power, and to see if she could entrust the No Names community to them since her upcoming gift game was cancelled, and there was no way they could get her back. The person visiting Shurayasha is, in fact, the person who cancelled her game after finding a good buyer to sell her to. He is introduced as the man who inherited a great historic community called Perseus. Shurayasha is infuriated by his decision and is even angrier after he, very mockingly, reveals that he intends to attack the No Names community. After that, Leticia, his property, went back to them without his permission. Leticia tells everyone that she will not be able to go back to them after she's sold, and for this reason, Izio challenges her to a fight to show her just how capable he is. The challenge is simple. They both throw lances at each other, and the person who beats hit loses. Leticia spreads her wings and flies up, getting ready to shoot. She infuses her vampiric red powers with the lance and throws the lance with all the power she has right where Izioi stands. It only takes him a single counterpunch to stop the lance and shatter the effect of her powers. The lance is thrown back at her at double speed and force and she doesn't dodge the attack, thinking that maybe if he's this powerful, she can go in peace, leaving them with her gift card, Lord of Vampires. Seconds before she gets hit, Black Rabbit saves her, devastated because Leticia has lost her divinity, and before they could get an answer from her, a thick, shining red light comes at an incredible speed in Asuka's direction. Leticia jumps to her rescue, and to everyone's shock, she is hit by the light and replaced, turning her into a stone statue. It's the power of the Gordons. The Persis community representatives arrive to get back what belongs to them, Leticia, letting everyone know that she will be sold out of the little garden. Black Rabbit tries to reason with them, only getting humiliated in return for being a no-name. Black Rabbit is furious, her hair turns pink from anger, and she finally shows her other gift, the Spear of Indra, a golden spear said to be a legendary weapon. Azioi grabs her by the ears, stopping her and saying that she is basically picking a fight with Thousand Eyes. The agents flee, and everyone heads back to Shuriash's place to talk with the boss of Perseus, Legus, instead. Legus is declining any kind of deal, and doesn't want to give them a chance to get their friend back, saying that you will only accept such a thing if Black Rabbit agrees to be his vassal for the rest of her life. Since he took quite a liking to her, only then will he give them back Leticia. Asuka cannot accept this offer and commands him to bow down with her gift, which does not work on him. He tries to attack her with his scythe, but Izioi immediately stops him mid-attack using one finger. They end the meeting after Shuriasha stops their fight. Black Rabbit, being a moon rabbit, is seriously considering the exchange for her friend. But Izioi has already found a way to force Persis's leader to accept a challenge against them under their terms. He went and defeated the Kraken and the Greya in gift games, two rather difficult games judged by Black Rabbit, and obtained two big round crystals that display the authority to challenge a legend, the legend being that of Perseus and Gorgon, the one Laius's community hosts. Black Rabbit wastes no time and runs to let Laius know of the current situation. The Perseus community quarters are set on a floating island. Izeoi, Asuka, Yo, Jin, and Black Rabbit all arrive in front of the main gates and start reading the rules of the legend challenge from the Jis roll. Simple rules. Laius is hiding somewhere behind the gates, and win if they find and defeat him. But whoever is spotted by his subordinates before finding him loses the right to defeat him. Two disadvantages are apparent. The subordinates can use an invisibility gift, making it ten times harder to avoid them, and Laius's gift is a former demon lord whom he made a slave, which will be extremely difficult to beat. Nevertheless, Izioi sets the strategy for everyone to follow. He divides everyone into three roles. Jin Russell is going to defeat the game master, Laius. Yot will use her sensory powers to detect and defeat the invisible subordinates, and finally, Asuga will act as bait. Black Rabbit is going to stick to being the ref for the game. Izioi busts open the gates of the kingdom, marking the start of the game. Asuka makes her first appearance, using the gift of the water sapling from the first episode to defeat most of the subordinates. Moving deeper into the castle, Yo is detecting invisible enemies and knocking them down, which led them to discover that the hats the subordinates wear are what make them invisible. Azioi orders Jin to hide until they spot Laius before wearing one of the hats and starting to attack enemies while being invisible. Soon enough they are faced with an enemy even Yo cannot detect, the chief of the subordinates. Due to him wearing the true Hades helmet, Yo is hit multiple times, but she quickly figures out that, with the help of her father's carving's power, she can detect him using ultrasonic waves. Once detected, Izioi knocks him down with a single punch and takes his helmet. Now the only thing left is to defeat Laius. Izioi and Jin wear the invisibility helmets and rush to the main arena, where the Black Rabbit and Laius await them, along with Leticia's stone statue. 
Laius activates his flying boots and elevates himself above everyone else, declaring that there is no reason for him to be the one fighting them. Azioe makes a step forward and states that there is a star in Persis's constellation that has been called Algol, who is a demon of the same class as Shuriasha, suggesting that they already know who they will be fighting instead of Laius. Laius immediately snatches a metal carving from his necklace, raising it to the sky. It shines a deep shade of red before releasing a powerful red lightning bolt, and with that, Laius awakens the demon lord Algol. Algol is a creepy-looking tied-up monster with the physique of an enlarged woman. Once summoned, she lets out a loud screeching sound in response to Laius' commands, letting everyone else on the island know of her presence. She bends her back and shoots a red lightning bolt from her mouth, powerful enough to travel far beyond the community's gates, turning everyone on the island into stone, except Black Rabbit and Jin because they dodged it, and of course Izioi, who was not affected even after getting hit by her attack. Algol starts attacking again, swinging ropes left and right, causing the whole arena to crumble. Azioi grins, telling everyone to watch him closely as he easily catches the next swing of rope Algol sends his way. Laius orders Albol to crush him right there and then and Albol shrieks again, throwing more ropes his way. This time, the ropes turn into huge snakes and wrap around Azioi's body tightly, but he breaks out of their grip with ease. Algol launches herself at him and Azioi grabs her by the arms. She starts enlarging herself even further, but Izioi easily lifts her up and smashes her down even after she's become ten times his size. Laius jumps, trying to land a blow on Izioi, which was easily dodged and countered with a kick that sent him flying. As a last attempt to win, Laius orders Albol to hit Izioi with the Eternal Prison, a skill powerful enough to petrify the entire world. Just as Albol was about to fire it, Izioi kicked the first lightning rays coming out of her mouth, completely shattering her ability, and then swiftly jumped and punched her in the face, hard enough to create a hole between her eyes that instantly ended her life. Izioi's gift turns out to be his ability to destroy the heavens and the earth and the power to destroy gifts simultaneously. Laius has no choice but to surrender to Izioi, and finally, Black Rabbit declares victory for the no-names who finally get Letitia back. Letitia recovers from being a stone statue, and everyone agrees that she should be a maid helper to the community from now on since they did all the work to save her, to which she happily consents. Everyone from the no-names is celebrating outdoors with delicious food, drinks, and music. And since Perseus was dismissed from the Thousand Eyes after the last game, their flag was taken down from the stars, creating a beautiful falling star show for everyone to gaze upon. The episode and arc end with Izioi setting a new goal for himself in the no-name community. He pledges to have their flag among the stars with every other great nation's flag in the little garden. Yo and a little helper from the unknown named Lily knock on Asuka's door in the morning to bring her an envelope that seems to attract her attention. They all decide to meet up with Izioi and Jin at the library to discuss its contents. The letter announces a North Side Arts and Crafts display with discussions about the items. In addition, organizers will also host gift games, including a main event held by the floor master. Excited about the North Side event, they ignore Jin's warning about the distance and write a letter to Black Rabbit, announcing their participation. If she fails to catch them before the event ends, they threaten to leave the community as punishment for keeping it a secret. It's only a joke, but Black Rabbit becomes furious and starts searching for them right away. Shin then explains to them that the Little Garden's surface area is around 13,000 times the size of the Earth, and that they will need an expensive astral gate for transportation. However, this does not sway their determination, and they decide to ask the floor master, Shuroyasha, to take them to the north side instead. She agrees on the condition that they help her with her own mission of supporting the festival's organization. The previous floor master of the north side has stepped down, and his daughter, Sandora, also known as Fire Dragon, is to be announced as the new northern master during the festival. Due to Sandora's young age, Shuroyasha was asked to assist in hosting the event. Upon accepting her request, they teleport to the north side immediately. Black Rabbit arrives suddenly and catches you first, ordering Shuroyasha to watch her while she looks for the other two who have already run away. Shuroyasha then, to make the festival more exciting, asks you to participate in a game called Duel of the Creators, in which only those who possess a creation-type gift can play. Aizioi and Asuka wander around the arts fair, discussing their plans to help the community. Black Rabbit suddenly appears behind them in a furious state. She catches Asuka and leaves her under Letitia's watch, then starts chasing after the fleeing Izioi once again. While Asuka, Lily, and Letitia are walking, Asuka spots a small fairy who gets scared and runs away. She chases after her. Letitia orders Lily to go back to the others as she follows her. After a brief chase, Azioi and Black Rabbit find themselves standing atop the towers with a large crowd of confused citizens watching them. Azioi then suggests giving their audience a show by playing a game of their own. 
They agree that the loser will have to obey one command from the winner. Their gag rolls appear immediately, listing the rules of the game. Whoever is first to grab onto the other with their full hand showed the winner. As simple as it is, the game starts with a coin toss. The second the coin hits the floor, Black Rabbit jumps backwards, which Azioi predicts and starts following her immediately. He recalls that her ears connect straight to the little garden central system, giving her an excellent sense of hearing. To increase his chances of winning, he refuses to let her out of his sight. Their high-speed jumps from one building to another leave the citizens in awe. Suddenly, Black Rabbit jumps down, presenting Aizioi with a dilemma. Either he jumps down as well, giving her a chance to capture him, or he loses sight of her inside the crowd. However, Aizioi outsmarts her by kicking the top of the tower he stood on, causing it to collapse and creating a distraction as the blocks tumble down. Seizing the opportunity, he immediately descends to her level, unnoticed. A huge piece of the tower then falls down, posing danger to the citizens, which they join forces to destroy and finally both of them grab each other's arms at the same time declaring the match a draw, meaning both have the right to command each other. However, before they could finish their conversation, the Salamandra community's military police arrived and stopped them. Shuriasha announces that Yo has made it to the final round of the Duel of the Creators tournament. She then asks the newest Northern Floor Master, Sandora Doltrake, to announce the rules for the finals. After leaving the event's arena, Izioi, Black Rabbit, Lily, and Shuroyasha stand before Sandora Doltrake, the newest Northern Floor Master, taking responsibility for the chaos caused by the two during the festival due to their fight. Surprisingly, Sandora chooses not to hold them accountable, considering it an advance payment for the assistance they will provide at the North. This announcement does not please her brother Mandora, the police officer who brought them to her. Sandora then starts talking to Jin and Lily, her friends who she hasn't met in a while. This makes him even more furious as he strikes his sword in Aizioi's direction, which he stops with one leg. Interrupting the ruckus, Shuriasha starts discussing the real reason the trio were asked for their help in the north, which is the prediction of a demon lord attack at the rise of the Fire Dragon Festival. Asuka is exploring the festival, accompanied by her new fairy friend, Rattenfanger, both admiring the various art pieces on display. Suddenly, they are pursued by a swarm of rats, seemingly targeting a fairy. Asuka attempts to use her gift to command the rats to return to their nests, only to discover that it has no effect on them. Fortunately, Leticia, who had been searching for Asuka, arrives just in time in her adult form and gets them out of there. After a relaxing bath in the hot springs, everyone is gathered around a table, discussing the plans for tomorrow's festival. When Shuroyasha asks Black Rabbit to serve as chair and referee for the gift games and make a proper public appearance, Curious, Yo asks Shuroyasha about her opponent in tomorrow's final game. She answers saying that she can only reveal the names of the communities, one of which is Rattenfanger, who is related to the ancient tale of the Piper of Hamelin. They bring up the discussion about a community that was led by a demon lord who summoned demons from numerous grimoires and was known as the Grim Grimoire community. However, they were believed to have perished after losing a gift game against another community. With the demise of the demon lord, they lost their power as well. And what's so chilling about this community is the figure associated with it, the Piper, who dressed in various colors, luring and ultimately killing 130 children. This individual happens to be Rattenfanger, also known as the man who controls rats. Asuka eventually gets worried that her fairy friend could be working for the Demon Lord. Aizayoi and the others eagerly take their seats in the arena, priming with anticipation to witness Yu's final game against Aisha Ignis Fatuus, a girl from the Will-O-Wisp community. Aisha's gift? the renowned monster known as the Jack-O-Lantern, is considered the best of her community's abilities. With a single clap of Shuresh's hands, the stage of the game undergoes a transformation. The contestants find themselves inside a massive tree, tasked with either escaping or destroying their opponent's gift. Aisha gets distracted with small talk, allowing Yo to seize the opportunity and immediately begins searching for an escape route. Aisha soon gives chase, launching attacks with the Will-O-Wisp's famed natural gas flames. Yo, however, feels a sense of relief that her opponent isn't the community's leader, a demon who appears on the border between life and death, leading her to believe victory will come easily. Cleverly, Yo deduces that the air is flowing towards the exit and makes her way in that direction. Yet her escape proves to be more challenging than anticipated as Jack surrounds her with his flames, hindering her progress and giving Aisha an opportunity to advance. Yo's fear grows immensely when she discovers through his speech that Aisha was once a wandering ghost who got adopted by the very powerful demon leader she fears, and that Jack is none other than his immortal gift creation. Upon realizing this information, Yo surrenders without hesitation, declaring Aisha's victory. Shortly after the conclusion of the final game, a disturbing sight unfolds before everyone's eyes. 
thousands of black jeez rolls raining down from the sky. Ezeula grabs one and reads its chilling contents aloud. The players will consist of all communities in this area. The host appointed will be the Game Master Shiriasha. For the host master to win, all players must be pushed to submission or massacred. For the players to win, they must shatter the false legend and make the true legend known. As if this eerie scene and the ominous message weren't enough, the atmosphere turns to pure terror when the demon lord and his two servants finally make a menacing appearance atop a huge monster referred to as Strom. Ezioi orders Jin to take care of Shiriasha and the chaos as he bravely sets off to confront the demon lord. With a mighty leap, he collides with one of the servants, gripping him by the shirt and effortlessly dragging him through a wall. The servant manages to break free and summons a massive bat, swinging it to reveal a viscous black substance on the wall that traps Izeoi. Ratten, the other servant, urges Wazer, her partner, to hurry, but he insists on dealing with the situation himself and tells her to go down. Unfortunately for them, carelessly revealing their names led Izeoi to figure out their identities as the two appear to be the demons born from the legend of the Piper of Hainlin, Ratten for rats and Wazer for the Wazer River. Letitia desperately strives to hold her ground in a fierce battle against the demon lord, Black Percher. However, the demon lord unleashes a dark and powerful aura, draining Letitia of her strength and consciousness. Just as Black Percher is about to deliver a fatal blow, a fiery blast attack from Sandora, the fire dragon of Salamandra, interrupts the confrontation. Surprisingly, the attack barely phases the demon lord. Meanwhile, the military police, Lily and Aisha work diligently to handle the chaos unfolding within the town. With Shuroyasha now completely sealed, she asks Asuka, Yo, and Jin to deliver her message to Black Rabbit. She urgently wants to convey that, first, there is a high chance of losing the game as the rules were intentionally written to be confusing and lacking in explanation, and that the Demon Lord is most likely from a new community. Finally, before she could tell him about the method used to seal her, Ratten descends and launches an attack by sending a horde of deformed citizens their way, which they manage to dodge. Ratten then summons a flute and begins playing a melody that severely damages their sense of hearing, particularly Yo's due to her superhuman hearing abilities. Taken aback by this unexpected assault, Asuka uses her gift to command Jin to escort Yo to Black Rabbit, while she confronts Ratten in battle. However, she is easily overpowered and swiftly knocked down. Finally, Ratten ascends into the air, continuing to play her haunting tunes, which ominously mesmerize the entire population plunging them into a state of terrifying hypnotism. The great chaos unfolding inside the town is interrupted by the Judge Master, Black Rabbit, standing atop a tower and announcing that the gift game will be suspended to deliberate a resolution for the matter. Gathered around the negotiation table, all players and hosts engage in discussions, starting with the suspicion of misconduct by the hosts, which they deny. After receiving confirmation from the Little Garden Central System, Black Rabbit affirms their innocence. With cheating ruled out, the Demon Lord proposes a one-month suspension of the game. However, before agreement is reached, Jin's vast knowledge enables him to unveil the Demon Lord's identity as Pest, the Black Death, infamous for being one of the most devastating pandemics in human history. Admitting to having incubated her pathogen within some of the participants already, she offers an ominous deal. To join under the command of Grim Grimoire Hamlin in exchange for sparing the other communities and releasing Asuka, whom they currently hold captive. Izeoi deduces that their community is newly formed, explaining their need for additional members. As the gravity of the situation sinks in, Jin reveals another unsettling piece of information. The Black Death symptoms can manifest as early as two days after infection. Faced with the potential threat to their lives, they engage in a heated argument to shorten the suspension period, recognizing the urgency of the situation. Ultimately, they reach a compromise, agreeing on a one-week suspension while amending the rules to include Black Rabbit as a participant and imposing a time limit on the game. Meanwhile, Aisha, Lily, and Yu are working hard to patch up the injured citizens in the city. The Yellow Fairy is also trying her best to wake up the unconscious Asuka. Once she finally wakes up, she is greeted with a particular sight, a familiar item she has seen in the display hall. Accompanied by a multitude of fairies who surround her, they offer the Red Giant of Steel, Dean, to her, urging her to put an end to the false fairy tale of Rattenfanger. These fairies reveal themselves as the lost children, who tragically perished in Hamlin natural disaster. Finally, they ask Asuka to use her gift to bring the weapon under her dominion, believing it will aid in their victory against the hosts. After a long talk with Yu, Aizioi figures out two things. First, according to the parallel world intersection theory, though different events take place on parallel timelines, there are points where they all converge to a single result, in this case, the death of the 133 kids of Hamlin. This leads him to discover the truth, which is that all of Pest, Ratten, and Strom are part of the fake legend, 
which was added later by the Black Death. Why? The piper who controls the rats, Rattenfanger, is not mentioned in the original inscription. By the time that he appeared in the P. Piper, it was already the 1500s at the height of the plague. This means that Ratten, who represents Gratz, and Pest, who represents the plague, can be written off, and Strom, which means Storm, is too much of a pretender to the throne. However, the hill mentioned in the inscription represents the hill that leads to the Weser River, suggesting that only the Weser is part of the true legend. He then concludes that chattering the one stained glass decoration on the battlefield with drawings of the incorrect tale is how they will shatter the false legend and bring forth the true one. One week has passed, the game resumes, and all the citizens are crashing the stained glass decorations following Izewa's conclusion. This appears to be indeed the right answer to the puzzle as Pest activates the grimoire of Hamelin in response, which summons the entire city of Hamelin to stop them from finding the stained glass panels. Jin takes charge and instructs everyone to find the church. In a sudden turn of events, Weezer reappears, emanating even greater power than their previous encounter. With a forceful swing of his massive bat, he sends Izioi flying through the air, coughing up blood upon landing. Filled with exhilaration, they clash head-on, releasing a tremendous gust of wind. Sandora and Black Rabbit join forces, launching an attack against Pest, only to have their attacks effortlessly repelled by her formidable aura barrier. Meanwhile, Jin and his companions manage to locate the accurate stained glass panel, but before they can proceed with breaking it, Ratten swiftly intervenes, unleashing a barrage of attacks fueled by her doubled strength. Just as a devastating blow from Estram is about to land on them, Asuka emerges aboard her colossal robot, obliterating the threat into countless fragments. Izioi guards a strong strike from Wizard's weapon with his bare arms. However, the clash is so strong that it sends him flying back a significant distance. Wazer, realizing that Izioi has uncovered the truth and solved the riddle, tempts him to join their side, promising an exciting journey with the Demon Lord. Izioi firmly declines, determined to pursue his own goals. With their intentions clear, they engage in another fierce clash. Izioi accuses Wazer of holding back, suspecting he has an ace card that could end the fight in an instant. Furious, Wazer accepts the challenge and swings his bat with intensified fury. They leap at each other once more, with even greater strength behind their attacks. Asuka, who had been controlling Dean the robot with her gift, uses his immense strength to crash all of Ratten's numerous stroms without breaking a sweat. Finally catching Ratten, she commands her to play one last song on her flute, the Pied Piper of the Hamelin. On the other hand, as Black Rabbit and Sandora continue their heavy battle against the Demon Lord, Black Rabbit comes to the realization that the Demon Lord is his spirit, embodying the malice and resentment of the 80 million people who perished in the plague caused by rising temperatures. Consumed by vengeance, Pest directs her anger towards Shuriasha, who controls the sun and blames her for the deaths of all those 80 million people for not saving them from their illnesses. Finally, after playing the beautiful melody, Ratten acknowledges her defeat and fades into thin air. The fight between Izioi and Wezer stretches on longer than expected, causing Wezer to question Izioi's true nature. With his weapon finally shattered to be yielding to his opponent's provocation, Wezer decides to retreat as well. As he begins to fade away, Izioi assures him that he thoroughly enjoyed their battle, as no other opponent has been able to match him in combat. Upon seeing both her servants retreat, Pest declares that she will take Shuriasha and kill everyone else. Unleashing her ominous dark wind, she covers the entire town, causing anyone who comes into contact with it to collapse. Amidst the chaos, Black Rabbit, momentarily distracted by the scene, finds herself the target of a sudden attack from Pest. However, Izioi appears out of nowhere, intercepting the strike and redirecting the Grimoire Blast with a powerful kick. He swiftly follows up with a series of rapid attacks, but Pest effortlessly dodges them all. Not giving up, Izioi lands another forceful kick, yet Pest remains unfazed. It becomes clear by then that defeating her won't be easy. Black Rabbit and Sandora team up once again, attempting to land a blow on Pest, but their efforts fall short. In a calculated move, Izioi intervenes once more, delivering a decisive kick. Though slightly annoyed, Pest retaliates, launching an attack against all three of them at the same time, indicating her intent to end the fight once and for all. She raises her arms, preparing to unleash more of her fatal wind into the sky. However, Black Rabbit, who has already come up with a clever plan, employs her gift card to transport them to a new location. The moon, escaping the range of Hamelin's grimoire. Enraged by this sudden turn of events, Pest prepares to strike, but Black Rabbit swiftly uses the gift card again, harnessing the power of the sun's light to weaken Pest and drain her own power. Izioi seizes the opportunity, delivering one final calculated kick that positions Pest in front of Asuka. Asuka summons the mighty Spear of Indra, using the fragment Black Rabbit had given her earlier in the battle, and commands the robot to hurl it towards Pest. 
Though Pest tries to evade, she finds herself trapped within Sandor's fiery cage. Finally, the spear connects, leading to Pest's defeat achieved through the incredible teamwork of the group. After a long and difficult battle, peace is finally restored. Shuri Asha, no longer sealed, apologizes to the public for not providing enough help. Following her words, Sandor proudly declares the victory of the Salamandra community in their game against the Demon Lord. The fairies, or rather the spirits of the lost children, finally being able to return to their original time as they wished, entrust the giant to Asuka, referring to it as their 131st friend as well as Marun, her little fairy friend. With the battle concluded, Aizioi pays a visit to Mandora's office to share a significant discovery. He reveals that Salamandra had intentionally invited the Demon Lord to the festival. It was a strategy to pit a rookie form master against a rookie Demon Lord, and if Sandora emerged victorious, it would boost their community's reputation and serve as a powerful advertising tactic. However, Aizioi adopts a serious tone as he expresses his concern for the safety of his friends. He warns Mandora that if any harm had befallen his comrades due to their deception, he would have sought retribution against everyone involved, including Sandora. Mandora defends his sister and their community, stating that their actions were taken to protect their flag and honor. In a solemn exchange, Ezioi forgives Mandora on the condition that if the no-names ever face trouble, Salamandra will be the first to come to their aid. Finally, the no-names resume their mission of reviving the lost land, this time with the effective assistance of Marun and the powerful giant robot Dean. They set forth with determination, united as a team, ready to overcome any challenges that lay ahead.